I grew up in the shadow of Washington Cathedral. That underpins a lot of what I do now. The cathedral was under construction as I was under construction. And what I learned at age six-ish is that three-dimensional space, in that case, is defined by vaulted ceilings and stained glass windows and mosaic floors, is capable of expressing and conveying deep human meaning. And I knew that at a very early age. The work that I respond to has that same spirit that I feel when I walk into Washington Cathedral. And on occasion I've been able to make a piece that seems to have some of that spirit in it. It's a hard burden to put on your art and yourself to make a living with it because one is faced with compromises that I've never seen as compromises. See your art uh, in an entrepreneurial context where you are willing to negotiate your art uh, into the commercial world, into the real world. Clearscapes formed almost three decades ago, surprising, um, when a sculptor that was me and, and Steve Schuster, an architect, crossed paths and, and we in fairly short order decided to sort of combine everything. As the sculptures got bigger and bigger, I, I came to use and need the tools of, of architecture. The craft of making buildings has contributed hugely to making pretty large sculptures in, in very public spaces. Earth castings are about where human intention and the grain of nature meet. It's a very affordable and, and ecological way of making very large things. There's really very little waste. We make these molds, we, we use the earth for a while, and then we fill in the molds with the same earth we took out. When you pour concrete in the ground, or when you put a shiny surface outside with the sun, the result is, I don't control the results. Um, I, I assert a form an approach, a scale, a shape, but the piece in the end is, is a product of the pushback of nature. And I like that collaboration between me and something bigger than me. Well, the shimmer wall is 9,000 or so uh, little aluminum flappers that uh, hang on a vertical axis and, and they, uh, they just move with the wind. I like making art that is also a louver and lets air into the heating and air conditioning system. I like making art that uh, withstands a hurricane. I sit on the State Arts Council and have for some years and, uh, and have, have learned so much about North Carolina and how rich North Carolina is in its arts and has been for several hundred years. Creating a, a public art ordinance and a public art method here in Raleigh uh, we needed that, and I was fortunate to help make that happen. As a sculptor, you put a piece out in the real world and you have to let it go. And skateboards and graffiti and homeless people, and who knows what the public will make of and do with a piece. And that's, that's part of the design. It takes a world-class artist and a world-class architect but it also takes a world-class client. And by that, I mean a client who's willing to lead, to go for something bigger than the usual. And I find that rare. And when it happens, uh, it is magnificent and great things can be accomplished.